with regard to the meter stick. Okay, so if I have my meter stick, I have the very center is where the force of gravity is acting on the meter stick, and I have my two fingers, we'll call that small f1 and small f2, I'll put them here, small f1 and small f2. So I have those two forces pointed up, I have the force of gravity pointed down. For sake of argument, let's say that we're putting the center of uh, rotation, the x of rotation, at the center of the meter stick, so that the torque created by the force of gravity is equal to zero. So the sum of our torques would then be equal to the torque of F1 plus the torque of the force of gravity plus the torque of F2. And like I said, the torque of F gravity is going to be zero if we put the axis of rotation at the center. Okay. This object is not moving, and so we can, we can say, um, we can analyze it by saying the sum of the torques is equal to zero since it's not actually rotating in the example that I have here. So, this is going to be some distance r1, this is going to be some distance r2 from the center of rotation, if we say that that is right there. So then we can say the sum of the torques equals zero, and then we have to figure out what the directions of these torques are going to be. If the axis of rotation is right here, the direction for this force is pointed up. It's at a distance this way with the r, and so we put our fingers in r, curl them in f, it's pointed into the board, that means it's going to be a negative torque. So, zero is equal to negative torque of f1, magnitude, and then this one, fingers in r, curl them in f, f2 has a positive torque, plus the torque of f2 equals zero, which tells you that the torque of f2 has to equal the torque of f1. Now, remember we have both the r and the f that are involved there, so it's a combination of those two things that end up having to be equal. Now, we can, we, can, we are free to choose the axis of rotation where we want it to be. So if we choose the axis of rotation to be at f1, then the sum of the torques is still zero. This is not moving. Sum of the torques equals zero. We have the torque from f1 plus the torque from the force of gravity acting on the meter stick plus the torque of the second finger pushing up on the meter stick. And that equals zero since it's not moving. If we choose the axis of rotation here, this has to be zero. So now if we do that, for the force of gravity, what's the direction of the torque? Fingers in R, and we curl them down in FG, and so we know that its torque is going to be negative because our thumb is pointing into the board, it's moving in a, in a clockwise direction. For F2, fingers in the direction of R, curl them up in F2, and we know it's going to be positive. So, zero is equal to negative torque of Fg plus the torque of F2. So this one, this Fg here, the torque of that is going to be R1, because that's the distance from this x of rotation to there, times Mg. And this one is going to be R1 plus R2 times the magnitude of this force up. And those things have to be equal if the system is in mechanical equilibrium. So we are going to be looking at different situations where you can create torques and then where you can balance torques in this mechanical equilibrium situation. But the other thing about mechanical equilibrium is that you don't just have the sum of the torques equaling zero, the sum of the forces also have to equal zero as well. So F1 plus F2 going up had to equal uh, 
the magnitude of the gravitational force that's pointed down, otherwise the meter stick would be moving in one direction or the other, up or down, not just spinning around.